Let's talk about beam dependence and see how the beam near zone length and the angle of divergence relates to frequency and transducer diameter. We'll talk about near zone length, NZL, also known as near field length. Here is the transducer turned sideways that we've seen earlier. It has a beam profile that is shaped like an hourglass, again turned sideways, consisting of a near field and a far field. The near field component is emanating from the transducer surface to the minimum beam width. Far field is beyond that. The beam diameter, D, is this measurement that is can be uh, varied across the beam profile at the near zone length, NZL, which is known as the focal length, D equals the minimum beam diameter or the beam width. NZL is defined as D squared over 4 lambda, where D is the transducer diameter, and lambda is the wavelength of the ultrasound beam. Now let's look at an example to consolidate this equation. For an unfocused transducer with a beam diameter of 20 millimeters operating at 3.08 megahertz, what is the near zone length, or NZL? Let's find out the frequency as it relates to wavelength. So wavelength equals 1.54 millimeters divided by F, which is the frequency expressed in megahertz, equals 1.54 divided by 3.08, which is conveniently equals to 0.5 millimeter for the wavelength. Next, let's plug in the equation for NZL. We know that D is 20 millimeters, and therefore 20 times 20 millimeters squared divided by 4 times 0 0.5 millimeter, which is the wavelength of the ultrasound beam. You get NZL equals 400 divided by 2, or 200 millimeters, and that in turn equals 20 centimeters. Thus, the Beam diameter is minimum at 20 centimeters from the transducer. Let's talk about far field divergence. This is the angle between the boundary of the ultrasound beam relative to the horizontal line as defined in the diagram below. The theta is the angle of spread of the ultrasound beam beyond the minimum beam width. Sine theta, by this definition, equals 1.2 lambda divided by d. Notice this equation applies to unfocused single transducer element. Let's do a question. For an unfocused tr ultrasound transducer with diameter d equals 4 centimeters operating at a frequency of 5 megahertz, let's calculate the far field divergence sine theta. Utilizing the equation for far field divergence sine theta equals 1.2 lambda over d is a 0.009. The answer is it b 155.8. Is it C, 0 0.09, or is it D, 0 0.15? Let's pause the video to work out your response. The correct answer is A, 0 0.009. What does this number mean anyways? Well, for small angles theta, sine theta is proportional to theta. Therefore, smaller the theta, smaller the sine theta, and smaller the divergence. Therefore, lambda in this case is 1.54 divided by 5, which is roughly 0 0.31 millimeters. And therefore, if you calculate 1.2 lambda divided by d, you get 0 0.009 as the answer. Note that 0 0.009, when you work out the actual number for theta, is about 0.5 degrees. If you're operating at a frequency of 1 megahertz as opposed to 5, that angle balloons to 2.5 degrees. If you're operating at 100 kilohertz, that becomes 27 degrees. Let's do another question on beam dependence. What is the definition of focal length or focal distance? Is it A, the diameter of the transducer? Is it B, distance from transducer surface to the NZL? Is it C, focal zone? Or is it D, narrowest beam diameter? The correct answer is B, the distance from the transducer surface to the NZL. Although at the focal length, or NZL, the beam diameter is at its narrowest, this question specifically asks for the definition of focal length, which is NZL or near zone length. Let's do one more question, this time on beam divergence. 
the ultrasound beam of an unfocused transducer diverges A. in the Fresno zone B. it diverges more at lower frequencies C. it diverges more at larger transducer diameter or is it D diverges more when the pulse duration PD is long let's think about the relevant equations and figure out your answer you may pause the video for more time the correct response is B it diverges more at lower frequencies recall that even though pulse duration being long as in choice D might seem tempting you have to remember that even if the frequency is low such that wavelength is high PD could be long however PD can also be long if frequency is high but yet there are more cycles to the ultrasound pulse so PD being long does not necessarily mean more divergence this is a trick question in summary the beam dependence can be stated as follows for unfocused single element transducers the NZL or near zone length is proportional to the wavelength of the signal as well as the transducer diameter D on the other hand beam diameter is a function of the transducer diameter and wavelength and the beam divergence also is proportional to lambda and inversely proportional to D now for a focused single element transducers where there is a use of fixed lens or a, a fo active focusing with a transducer array the beam diameter will be much tighter and the beam width at focal distance surprisingly is also similar in that is 1.2 lambda over D let's summarize the dependence of NZL on both frequency and the beam diameter in this case on the left hand side for a frequency of 2 megahertz you have a certain beam profile when you increase the frequency from 2 to 3 megahertz the profile changes such that NZL increases now how much does NZL increase based on the equation that we learned NZL is proportional to the square of D but yet is inversely proportional to lambda therefore frequency increase lambda decrease so NZL increases by 1.5 times at 3 megahertz compared to when the frequency is at 2 megahertz on the other hand for beam divergence sine theta is proportional to lambda and inversely proportional to D therefore since frequency is increased lambda decreases therefore sine theta and turn theta decreases let's look at dependence on transducer diameter for a given transducer diameter in this case of 5 centimeters there is a given NZL and a beam divergence angle of theta let's increase D the transducer diameter from 5 centimeters to 10 centimeters in this case the NZL greatly increases whereas the beam divergence decreases by how much you might ask again let's revisit the definition of NZL know that notice that it is proportional to D square therefore since the transducer diameter is double the NZL is quadruple from D equals 5 to 10 centimeters NZL increases by four times in terms of beam divergence sine theta is inversely proportional to the transducer diameter therefore beam divergence is decreased but it's only uh, a 1 over D dependence now let's move on to psi lobes what are psi lobes? psi lobes are unwanted energies that are transmitted on either side of the main ultrasound beam it is located in the far field region beyond the focus it is an unwanted sound energy that comprises typically less than 10% of the energy of the main ultrasound signal it can be minimized in the use of phase array transducers and also when used during pulse mode operation furthermore you can use apodization to minimize psi lobes it employs a non-uniform electrical excitation across the transducer such that the center of the transducer has more piezoelectric effect compared to the peripheral finally you can use tissue harmonics 
to eliminate or minimize psi lobes. Tissue harmonics utilizes the higher frequency components of the ultrasound signal. Since the main lobes have more energy in terms of their high signal, high frequency signals, by preferentially amplifying the higher energy main lobes versus the lower energy side lobes, you're in effect eliminating or minimizing the side lobe contribution to the final ultrasound beam.